A quick and easy way to think of story structure is to think about how a story ends. Oh yes, studying the body of a story in its final hours can reveal a lot. A good conflict involves a main character in search of a goal, facing an obstacle or antagonist along the way. But how does that play out? Generally, there are four distinct possibilities of conclusions. Let's dive into the story autopsy, shall we, and find out. Antagonist defeated, goal achieved. Perhaps the happiest ending of all. Think of the classic stories such as Cinderella, Return of the Jedi, Lion King, and Avengers Endgame. Stories like this often have an epic feel, because not only does the hero get what they wanted all along, but they manage to play a pivotal role in the defeat of the antagonist. But does the main character always get what they want in this cruel life? Of course not, which is why there is the next option. Antagonist defeated, goal failed. In these stories, it turns out the hero was a little clueless about what they needed in life. They end up tossing out their goal for something different instead. In Walt Disney's The Jungle Book, Mowgli is determined to stay in the jungle. His biggest obstacle to that is Shere Khan the tiger. Now even though Shere Khan is defeated, Mowgli decides that, hey, I'm a man, I might want to procreate one day. And so he joins the man village after all. Another example of this is the musical Annie. Annie's main goal is finding her biological parents. Miss Hannigan plays an important obstacle to that goal, presenting her with some fake parents to fall for. But even though the ruse is discovered, Annie decides eh, she doesn't really need to look for her biological parents after all. Because let's be honest, rich eccentric millionaires are way cooler than people that collect ashtrays and art. Now does the antagonist ever win? But of course they do. Antagonist not defeated, goal fail. The obvious consequence of the antagonist not being defeated is that the hero doesn't get their goal. The bleak ending of 1984 is a good example. In that story, the main character's attempt to thwart Big Brother are completely undermined to the point where he ends up even liking Big Brother himself. Sometimes it's a sad but less dark ending. For example, in Casablanca, Rick has to decide that the obstacle, Victor Laszlo, has to take the love of his wife, Elsa, away on the airplane. Ultimately, Rick realizes for the greater good of the world, this is the inevitable way things have to be. After all, the main character's happiness doesn't mean a hill of beans in this mixed up world. Another possibility is the main character's goal is not actually what they need. For example, in Finding Nemo, Marlin's big desire is to keep Nemo safe. Now, Nemo is the biggest obstacle to that desire because, you know, he kind of wants to live his life. So Marlin has to realize that his goal of keeping Nemo safe is not really attainable or going to yield a happy life. He has to let Nemo win. By the way, don't miss out on our other videos. Like this video, subscribe, hit the bell. Autocrit, it's a good place. Now finally, is it possible to lose against the antagonist and yet still get the goal? Interestingly enough, yes. Failure to defeat antagonist, goal achieved. Sometimes this happens because the main character is not responsible for the defeat of the obstacle, such as Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's been humorously pointed out that Indiana Jones played no role at all in the defeat of the Nazis, and had he not been there, well, the Nazis would have opened up the Ark and been killed anyway. However, ultimately, Indiana Jones does achieve his goal of rescuing the Ark and storing it in the middle of a bunker in the desert. Romance plays with this as well, because often the love interest is the antagonist of the story, the hate-to-love relationship. Hmm, <laughs> sounds like my relationship with my calculus professor. No, I still hate him. Stories like Pride and Prejudice, You've Got Mail, or Bridget Jones' Diary play into this format. And finally, in a series, you can have an installment where the antagonist wins, and the hero also gets their goal, 
for that specific book. <laughs> for example, in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter does achieve his goal of winning the Triwizard Tournament. On the other hand, Barty Crouch Jr. also achieves his goal of bringing back Lord Voldemort from the dead. Makes for a good cliffhanger, right? So, four possible scenarios. That's all there is, right? Well, no, there is a twist. You see, in some stories, the audience doesn't even know what happened. The ending is ambiguous. You can be unsure whether the character got their goal or not. For example, in Inception, Christopher Nolan has the audience wondering if Cobb really did return to his family or not. You can also be unsure whether the antagonist is defeated or not. In Moby Dick, the main thrust of that story is Ahab's obsession with killing the white whale. And even though that obsession leads to his destruction, the audience is left ambiguous as to whether or not his final blows to the whale killed the obstacle or not. So, let's all take a moment now and pay our respects to these story types. And, uh, you may want to consider which story type you are currently writing before you reach your end. For those of you in the comments, let us know which story type do you like to write or to read the most. Until next time, happy writing. Just a reminder, subscribe, ring the bell on this channel, and uh, check out these videos. Some great writing tips for you. We'll see you there.